Hello, I am Eric Syverson. Uh, I am a partner at the law firm of Raines Feldman in Los Angeles, California, and I lead the internet and data security practice here. And I wanted to start putting together some videos targeted towards the family law practitioners. I've been doing a lot of presentations lately for family law attorneys uh, with respect to data breach and privacy issues and internet law issues in general. And the reason for this is that I have seen a rise in my own practice of what I call crossover litigation. And what I mean by crossover litigation is you have spouses divorcing uh, and having custody battles in family law court and simultaneously we have litigation in federal or state court and uh, that often happens because in today's environment um, couples uh, take their disputes or exact revenge online in a variety of ways and one of those ways I want to talk about today is the phenomenon of uh, divorcing spouses hacking into each other's digital accounts. This is typically their email accounts or their social media accounts. Uh, those accounts are typically password protected. And so we see this happen in, in one of two scenarios generally. Um, Either uh, a spouse uh, knows the password or is able to guess the password to an email account, for example, uh, or a spouse has uh, installed key logging software on the other spouse's computers. Uh, and what key logging software does is it essentially records the activity. Uh, of another spouse on that computer. They don't know that, but for example, a, a spouse logs into their email account. The spouse that's installed the software uh, is then able to uh, have the password accessed. Many times the spouse can watch this happen in real time. So what I've had in a number of cases uh, is uh, that a spouse is able to uh, hack into the other spouse's email account and read and review personal emails or even worse emails with their lawyers in an attempt to just to obtain an advantage in the litigation to anticipate witnesses or arguments made in court so when that happens if you suspect that your spouse is hacking into your email account, um, they've used key login software, or they've guessed your password, or the password hasn't been changed, the question might come up, what can you do about it? And if you are the victimized spouse in that scenario, there's a federal law and several state laws uh, that provide you with the cause of action. And so if you are uh, the victim of this activity, you can sue under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which is a federal statute, and you would typically see that brought in federal court. Many other states have similar statutes uh, that provide for criminal and often civil penalties for by accessing a password protected account or network. Um, one of the challenges with Computer Fraud and Abu Abuse Act claims in the family law context is that there's a damages requirement. You cannot bring that claim unless you've sustained $5,000 uh, in in damage and the way a plaintiff would typically plead that is they would hire computer experts forensic experts to uh, 
discover, identify, and remediate uh, the intrusion. Oftentimes, uh, it's as simple as changing a password. However, if there's software installed that needs to be eradicated, you may actually need to spend $5,000 uh, to do that. The standard for a Computer Fraud and Abuse Act claim is unauthorized access. So a factual question frequently comes up of what is authorized and what is not. If you are defending one of these claims, you would typically want to focus in on that unauthorized aspect. Oftentimes spouses know each other's passwords. They look at each other's phones. They have joint email accounts. This gets uh, very difficult to uh, segregate out when spouses divorce. At what point is one spouse barred from accessing the other spouse's computer or email account when it's been custom and practice for them to read each other's emails and text messages throughout the marriage? There's no definitive law on this. Is it when divorce papers are served? Does one spouse have to, in writing, instruct the other spouse to no longer access a certain email account or a phone? We don't have any answers on that. And when these are litigated, you frequently see a lot of discovery focus on this particular issue. I should also say that different federal circuits have different standards for the unauthorized portion of this. In some circuits, the court will determine whether or not the access was unauthorized by looking at the ultimate use of the material. You see this often in the trade secrets or employee-employer scenario, where an employee may be authorized to access a database to do company work, but they are not authorized to access the database to use it to set up a competing business, for example. The Ninth Circuit, where I'm located in California, the courts do not look at the ultimate use of the material access. The court just wants to know, was access authorized or not? Often these cases, as a plaintiff, do not give you much leverage. If you are looking to use this claim as leverage, either to extract money from the spouse or to gain an upper hand in the family law court, it often does not work. There are no statutory damages available for a computer fraud and abuse that claim. You're limited to actual damages. In the family law scenario, it's hard to imagine many circumstances where significant damages are incurred. In the commercial context of a business and an employer-employee relationship, you can imagine uh, actual damages rising to a higher level, either to remediate an unauthorized access or as part and parcel of a uh, trade secrets type of claim when a competitor has accessed a, a network. In my next presentation, we'll talk about a claim that often goes hand in hand with the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act claim that does provide significant economic leverage for the plaintiff. That is the Stored Communications Act, and that provides for statutory damages, and it generally, generally relates to reading of electronic communications stored on a third-party server. What we're typically talking about are emails. So next time we'll get into that. That's often the more lucrative claim to bring. Uh, this was our discussion of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act claim. In the future, we'll also discuss ways to prove up violations through digital evidence. I'm Eric Syverson from Raines Feldman. Talk to you next time.